Hello, and welcome to episode four of Hexagon Novotel's webinar series on an introduction to GNSS. My name is Jennifer Busser, and I'm the Correction Services Product Manager at Hexagon's Autonomy and Positioning Division. Thanks for joining me. Today, we're going to be exploring how to reduce GNSS positioning errors. This episode explains some important techniques for reducing GNSS errors and improving position accuracy. I'll share how your choice of GNSS equipment can impact position quality and how your position can be improved further by GNSS correction data. I recommend downloading our Introduction to GNSS book at Novotel.com for a more in-depth look at reducing errors in GNSS systems. So far in our series, we followed a signal as it was generated and transmitted by a satellite received by an antenna and processed by a receiver. But as we saw in episode two, basic errors occur at all stages of GNSS positioning. Clock and orbit errors are introduced at the satellite. The satellite signals are sped up or delayed as they move through the Earth's atmosphere. And as they get closer to the ground, they could reflect off buildings before finally getting to the receiver. With improvements in technology, scientists and engineers have developed a variety of methods to reduce these errors. So let's dive in and take a look at how we can make our position more reliable and accurate with equipment and correction services. Your equipment alone plays an important, if not critical, role in mitigating errors. High-end antennas and receivers are designed to use more signals. They are equipped to reduce more challenging error sources such as multipath, receiver noise, and poor signal quality. All of this helps to improve your final calculated position. As we mentioned in episode three, antenna selection is important because it acts as a gatekeeper. The quality and design of the antenna directly impacts the quality of what goes into your GNSS position. Their design is critical for filtering out bad quality signals. So it is important to match your antenna to your receiver's capabilities. Remember, quality in equals quality out. Nothing impacts your performance quite like your antenna placement. Antennas with a clear view of the sky are able to track much cleaner signals, which means higher quality inputs into your position calculations. Environments with buildings, trees, or other large obstructions can block or reflect signals. This can have a significant impact on your position accuracy. If you're interested in learning more about antennas, our introduction to GNSS book details which antennas are best suited to different GNSS environments. Your receiver and antenna selection also directly impacts what information from the satellite you can track and use to compute a position. The more, the better. Tracking multiple constellations increases the number of potential satellites you can position with, giving you built-in redundancy. If a satellite moves out of sight, you still have a large number of other satellites to track and keep getting a position. With access to multiple frequencies, your receiver has more information about each individual satellite and can perform more comprehensive error and positioning models because of this. It also builds in resiliency against interference if one frequency band is knocked out. Equipment and algorithm design plays a fundamental role in how all of the information in the satellite signal is used. Systems that can leverage more information are often able to recover from delays and outages, atmospheric errors, and multipath effects. All of these factors contribute to having better quality data to work with, which means a more accurate and reliable position. Once you have the right equipment, there's more that you can do to reduce error and improve accuracy. Depending on your location and application, you may want to use correction services. Corrections are additional information about error sources. The receiver uses this input while calculating its position, and as a result, you get a more accurate and reliable solution. The three commonly used correction services we'll focus on here are SBAS, RTK, and PPP. By this point in our series, we've thoroughly discussed the basic relationship between GNSS satellites and transmission of data to user equipment. The signals travel from the satellites and are tracked by receivers on the ground. When a receiver is established on a fixed coordinate, 
This is called a base or reference station. These base stations play a fundamental role in correction generation. First, we can get important information about error sources by comparing the measured base position against its known coordinate. Second, if you have many base stations, you can collect data across this network to get regional information and provide corrections over a large area. Whether you're using a single base station or a network-based service, these corrections are delivered to the user's equipment to improve the position accuracy. The first type of corrections we'll look at are generated and delivered through satellite-based augmentation systems. Countries around the world have their own SBAS networks to supply corrections to regional users. As shown here, satellites are tracked by the network and this data is forwarded to a master station. The master station knows the location of all the other stations in the network. It computes corrections by comparing the measured positions to the known coordinates. The corrections are then uplinked to geostationary SBAS satellites and are broadcasted back to receivers on the ground. The corrections are freely available to all users in the covered region to reduce atmospheric, satellite clock, and orbital errors. This technique provides nearly meter level accuracy. RTK is a regional solution requiring a base station near to the application area. For this slide, to keep things simple, we'll call the user's receiver the rover. The base uses a radio to broadcast its well-known coordinate and carrier phase measurements to the rover. The rover then differences these measurements to eliminate common errors. With complicated algorithms, the rover leverages the corrections to quickly perform carrier phase ambiguity resolution and precisely determines its location relative to the base station. This method achieves an impressive centimeter level accuracy. And because of this fast and accurate performance, RTK provides an effective solution for high accuracy applications. However, as this is a differencing technique, there is a basic assumption that the conditions at the base and rover are very similar. As the rover travels further from the base, atmospheric conditions begin to vary between the two locations. As a result, good RTK performance can be limited to roughly a 30 kilometer baseline. Many users set up their own local base station on a surveyed coordinate. To extend RTK coverage, you can also access services from network RTK providers who maintain regional networks and broadcast corrections over the internet. Precise point positioning services rely on an expansive network of base stations to gather GNSS data. This data is sent to a central server to model clock and orbital errors, as well as pseudo range and carrier phase biases. The resulting corrections are transmitted to users by geostationary L-band satellites, some services are also sending these corrections over the internet. Once the corrections are downloaded, the receiver requires time to properly compute any remaining errors. This is well known as the convergence time. Because of the low density network required for PPP, most services are available globally. This provides a benefit to users covering large application areas or who are operating in remote regions. PPP has historically provided an accuracy in the decimeter range and convergence times of over 45 minutes. But advances in technology are improving this performance. In fact, some services now provide centimeter level accuracy in just under a few minutes. This has brought PPP forward as an option for precision applications such as agriculture and automotive. When it comes to choosing a correction source, there's a couple of things to consider, like, what corrections are available near you? What are your hardware and infrastructure requirements? And what reliability and accuracy do you need? Each correction type has benefits and limitations and their use ultimately depends on your application requirements. Some users may actually choose to use multiple correction sources to provide extra coverage, redundancy, and reliability. But regardless of which service you choose, this additional information reduces errors and improves your calculated position. Well, this concludes our section on reducing errors through GNSS equipment and correction services. Our next episode will describe how to use additional sensors like inertial navigation systems to enhance your position even further. If you're ready to learn more about these GNSS concepts, you can download our book, An Introduction to GNSS, on our website, novatel.com. Thanks for watching episode four of our webinar series. We look forward to joining you for our next episode.